My name is Matt Seaman. I'm with the Consortium for Service Innovation. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about getting executive buy-in. How do we make sure that we are communicating effectively to upper levels of management, the C-suite, and what are the things that we have to think about and consider as we move from traditional support and services into more self-services, communities, social networks, generative AI, all of these things that are going to impact where we're going and how do we kind of sell those things into the senior level and the executive suite and how do you speak to those executives? So today we're really going to talk a little bit about simplifying the message for executives based on the things we've captured from member experiences. I think one of the things that's unique and nice about the consortium, all of the things that we have written down, all of the things we have in our digital library are captured real world experiences by people at companies implementing things and doing things. None of this is just randomly made up. It's all actual real world experiences that we're basing this on. One of the things that we hear often is that the senior leaders, they just don't understand the importance of what I'm trying to get across to them. So we often kind of get this sense that people feel like the executive staff or the senior leaders just don't get it. And the fact is that they do get it. They just have a, a slightly different role and a slightly different perspective that they're looking for. And remembering that every time we go talk to an executive, Everything they're hearing about from everybody is the most urgent thing. It's the highest priority. The world's on fire. My thing is more important than anybody else's because you need to fund me. The executives get this kind of view of, well, if everything is the same priority and everything is urgent, everything is high priority, I still have to make decisions about where to put investment. And when we're communicating with executives, being efficient and direct is what they expect. They don't have the time to have wandering discussions, go into every single level of detail or understand everything that's a perspective in order to make decisions. A group of 30 different people from 22 member companies came together and talked about the gains, tasks, and pains of people in services. So we did empathy maps of knowledge workers, coaches, managers, and executives looking at what motivates them to show up at work every day and be effective, what are the actual tasks that they have to do, and what are the pains that they face. What executives are doing, right? They're spending a lot of time on communicating expectations, making sure that people understand what we're trying to achieve as an organization, what we're trying to achieve as a company, what the expectations are from us as a group of people that are helping the company be successful. Thinking about the vision, the strategy, the goals of the company, the goals of the organization, how does it all fit together and making sure we have solid plans for all of that that can be communicated not only out to the company, but to investors in the company, to the board of directors, right? How do we kind of communicate all of these things, having a succinct vision and strategy and goals? Managing major customers. So chief customer officers, CEOs, right? They're always going out to the largest customers that we have or working with sales on new major deals. It's a, it is a big part of an executive's job is interacting with our largest, most important clients. Thinking about the culture of the company hiring and retaining talent, managing how to deliver on all the different goals that the company has across all of the different organizations, and engaging key stakeholders, whether those are the people that work for the executives, the board of directors, again, the investors. The executives definitely have to make sure there's alignment between the sales executives, the chief financial officers, the CTOs, all of the kind of executive levels. The next thing I want to talk a little bit about is like what executives find painful. So what are the things that are causing them stress? Because if we're going to go talk to the executives and sell them on our program or our needs, talking to them about things that help relieve their pain or make it easier for them to do what they need to do are clearly things that they're going to, going to attach to. Obviously, budget and resource pressures. So I haven't come across a company yet that tells me they have unlimited budget and unlimited resources and everybody can do whatever they want. There is always a budget. There's always pressure on we want to do more, but we don't have the staff. We don't have the tools. We don't have the money to do more. Being able to show the return on investment of where we're putting our money, that return on investment may be profits. It might be revenue growing. It might be the stock price. It might be that our employee engagement scores have gone up. It could be we've 
hired better talent, whatever the, the investment is, what are we seeing the benefits of that investment be? Making tough decisions that impact people. It is not easy when you have to go through reductions of staff. It's not easy for the people making those decisions. It's not easy for the people that are impacted by those decisions. It's not easy when you have to think about, can we afford to do salary increases this year or all of those things? Um, one of the biggest pains that we hear from executives, right, are the things that impact the people in their companies and their organizations. Addressing customer escalations kind of goes back to managing major customer accounts, but definitely one of the pains, right, is things aren't going well. So now I'm getting yelled at by a customer. I have to go figure out why the customer is unhappy. I have to go, you know, rally resources around that pretty, pretty painful experience, which most of us being in services, we, we have probably felt that over our careers at different times. Handling the criticism, you can never make everybody happy. So there's always criticism about what's going on in the company. Things aren't running well. Things aren't being thought through properly. All of those things are handling that. Keeping up with the pace of change. I mean, the pace of change seems like it is forever accelerating. Every year we talk about it seems like this year there's going to be more change. With the impacts of AI and all of the things we see there, we know that, the, that we're already seeing major impacts in services because of AI. What is that going to look like? The pace of change and the competition as technologies become more ubiquitous and as the things that a company maybe innovated on five years ago, now 10 other companies are also doing, being able to keep up with that pace of change is definitely one of the pains. And managing all those fears and concerns about failure as an individual, as a company, as an organization. In order for me as a support agent to do my job, the level of detail I need to know about how to do my job is very high. I have to know how to log into my CRM, what I'm supposed to capture, how I'm supposed to do KCS, the products or services that I'm involved in, lots and lots of detail. When we get into the management layers, then there has to be more summary done. All of those details can't be understood. All of those details can't be known. So we have to have a bit narrower understanding of all of those details and there's far less people. So we have to kind of think about, well, how do I summarize? Now we get to the executive level. There's very few people at the executive level and the level of details that they need to make decisions gets much less. They can't understand all of the details that everybody else in the company understands. It's just, it's virtually impossible for one person to know what are the things that 800 people that are executing the job every day know. So it's kind of a bit of a stacked perspective on what I need to know and how much detail I can absorb to make decisions as an executive versus all of the details I need to know as a person executing the job. And one of the things that we often kind of hear about or see is this desire that I need to get everything I know across to somebody so they understand the impact and power. But that muddles the message, makes it more challenging for somebody to understand what it is you're actually talking about. So how do we think about getting the right pieces of information at the right time to the right person to get our points across. And at the same time, when we think about the, the perspectives and the scope of responsibility or accountability, it's a bit of an inverse, where if I'm an executive, the CEO of the company, I have to understand, well, what are the main pain points and challenges in the sales organization, the marketing organization, the services organization, the product teams, software development, hardware production, manufacturing, whatever they are. So I have to have a very broad perspective of all the things going on across the entire company and scope of responsibility and accountability, but I can't know all the details of everything going on in all those organizations. And as a knowledge worker, my perspective, if I'm sitting in services, I know a little bit about sales, but I'm certainly not engaged to know what are all the pain points of sales? What are all the activities that sales are doing? What are all the things that they care about every day? So my perspective is, and my impact or scope of responsibility is much smaller. So that, that's this kind of reverse pyramid that we need to think about if we're going to take and go speak to the executives. And where does what I care about fit into their broad perspectives? What are the things they need to know in order to make decisions? And how do I communicate those things up? I kind of like this visual just as a way to get my own head around. If I'm going to go talk to my board of directors, what are the things that they need to know to help me think through a strategic initiative or a change? What are the things that they need to know? Because they can't know everything that we're doing in the consortium. We have 70 member companies. We have thousands of people that we interact with. 
they can't understand all of those discussions. What are the, the key things that they need to know from me in order to help me make decisions? So it's just kind of a, I think a good visual that simplifies understanding that I need to narrow down what I'm talking about and summarize it and get it to be much more succinct. Some of the things that we need to think about when going and talking to leaders is, first of all, they're just people in a different role. They're not like some mythical thing out there. Executives are just people. They just happen to be in a different role than maybe I'm in, but they're just people that are trying to make decisions and do the right thing. When we go talk to executives, we have to be very, very clear on what it is we're there to do. So are we there to tell them something? Are we there because I need something from them? I'm there to ask them a question. So being very clear on my purpose for the discussion and what is the point of view that I have on that topic. Again, they have to synthesize so much information all the time. We have to make it simple for them. Being fast, so getting to the point quickly with minimal wandering and added details, telling stories isn't helpful, wandering around about all kinds of other details isn't helpful. Getting to the point quickly with minimal wandering around, adding in all kinds of crazy details, but just what is it that they need to know and how do I get there as quick as I can? Align your stuff to strategic objectives. So what are the things that the executives care about? What are the pains we see in our company? What are the strategic goals that they have and how does what I'm talking about fit into that bigger picture? So making sure that when I go talk about a KCS program, intelligence swarming, management changes, the need for a new tool, how does that fit into the bigger picture? So how does that help the company achieve a goal? Thinking through how does what I want to accomplish fit into the bigger picture, critically important when trying to sell executives on, on an idea. Metrics are hugely powerful. They're very important, but chasing every metric isn't powerful and isn't important. So what are the minimal needed measures that highlight the purpose for me showing up? And what is it that shows the right thing, positive and negative? So only showing positive things isn't necessarily the right way to go. What are the things that I need to get across to show that I'm, I've thought through this, there's facts and data behind it. It's not just an idea, but doing that as cleanly and succinctly again as possible and not adding in everything that maybe you have to monitor, but what are, what are the KPIs, the key performance indicators that the executives would want to see? And being very open to feedback. I remember presenting uh, to the executive staff at my previous company, and I felt like I was getting beat up with the questions that were being asked challenging my assumptions, challenging my conclusions. And after you and your team have worked on something for a long period of time, getting those challenging questions, feeling that pushback can feel personal because you've put so much time and energy into it and you feel like you're right. But if you take it as a bit of a personal attack, then it really isn't going to lead to anything successful. So really going in and listening to feedback, being objective, taking the feedback, being able to then iterate on the feedback is really critical in order to kind of move an idea forward. And remembering that it's the job of the senior staff to kind of make sure that they have a very strong understanding and they have what they need to make the right decision. And a lot of times that comes across as I'm challenging you as a person, I'm challenging the assumptions you're making. And if that is taken personally, then that really doesn't lead to anything positive. So so being very, very open to listening to the feedback. Negative feedback is poorly wrapped gifts. Greg Oxton used to say that. So listening to that feedback, it may feel like it's not what you want, but really it is. It, it, that hearing that feedback is, is what allows you to then go change your message or they're thinking of something you didn't think of, or they're pointing out a perspective that you just didn't have. Leveraging a strategic framework is a great way to make sure that what I'm proposing or the things I'm working on match to the key objectives of the company. It links everything. So it's an easy way to pull from here's your strategic objective all the way down to the measure I'm going to use that helps show that. And it's part of a larger strategic planning process. Sometimes we spend quite a bit of time helping people create strategic frameworks for KCS or intelligence warming. And it's almost a one and done where it's like, we created it. Okay. We put it on the shelf and then we aren't leveraging it and using it and updating it and keeping it current. It really is a living document that should always be getting updated every six months, every year, whatever part of a planning process.